know, like I'm always doing that. I'm, you guys have seen my YouTube channel. Uh, there's get more and more videos all the time. So those two videos there of, you know, teaching you guys those two tunes are going to be used by many, many people, hopefully. Okay. And uh, I also have, I don't know if I told you guys, but I also have just a Dan McDonald Fiddle Teacher um, YouTube channel. And uh, all of my classes that I teach, so that's my intermediate and my beginner classes, some of you are members, they go up on that YouTube channel along with all of the music that everybody has learned. There's like a hundred and some videos up there now of different tunes played slow and fast and the classes themselves. So it's a really good resource. If you want practice on stuff, you can go on there. You can practice tunes. You can. I have lots of exercises and annoying things that some people really like to do on there. And uh, so, you know, please feel free to join. You guys can join both YouTube channels and get all the material as I make it. But anyway, so that's my plan for tonight. I thought it would be a, it would be a good thing to do on the Zoom. <laughs> Anyway, so let's get started. So I think tonight what we'll do is we'll warm up with our usual G major, and then we're going to try C major scale in two octaves, okay? And then we're going to try our, we'll start, we'll practice our jigs that we learned last week and uh, try learning the new one, okay? All right. So I'm going to mute everyone. Mute all. Great. And make sure the quick time is rolling which it is. That's wonderful. Okay, so I'm all tuned up because I was playing just before you guys tuned in here during Sylvie's dance class. <laughs> so let's do that nice G major scale. Plenty of sound, lots of bow, etc. like that. Ready? Go! Try the arpeggio. Ready, go. that was okay and uh, assuming that you had a good batting average and that everything was in tune on that slow run maybe you had to do a little bit of tuning here and there but uh, hopefully it wasn't too bad and let's do it a little bit quicker okay same thing a little quicker and uh, let's keep it in tune even though we're going quicker a one two three uh.
anticipation of our C major scale in two octaves, let's do that arpeggio one more time, but we're going to add the high B at the end. So when we're finished playing the high G, we're going to play high B and then back down, okay? One more arpeggio. Ready, two, three, and... <laughs> Get yourself in the mood for playing high. <laughs> okay, so that's G major. Everybody feeling good? The hand is kind of in a good spot and everything feels all right? It's great. All right, let's do it. Let's do the C major in two octaves, okay? Here's your C. It's a hard one. Okay, make sure she's comfy. And here, let's do it. Nice and slow. No need for a rush. Ready? Go. How's everybody feeling about that? How did it go? Bit of a stretch, eh? <laughs> Let's do it again straight away. Please stop me if you have any questions or if you can't get up there, if you can't get back to B, okay? Don't hesitate to stop me and ask me what's going on. Let's do it one more time. Nice slow one. Ready, go. terrible I got up to the very very top of the scale did, did you guys hear my three attempts at the C it was terrible it was the worst thing ever so we're gonna do it again sorry about that it's my fault uh, but it does occur to me as I was doing that so when you're trying to get that C for me and for my finger I'm usually a little bit sharp okay and I don't know about your hand but mine is small and so when I reach with that pinky it's actually kind of broad how much of my pinky covers the string. It's kind of broad. So that's kind of a lot of wiggle room there. So I find myself having to kind of lean back when I hit it inevitably. And I'm going to try to do that first try this time around. Okay? Something to keep in mind. It's hard. It's hard for sure. Let's do it one more time. And then we'll do the arpeggio. There's your C. Okay, here we go. Ready? And...
have redeemed myself. That was much better. Hi, girly. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm going to watch her dance. 7.30. You got 15 more minutes of dancing. Sylvie's dance teacher is demanding, too. When she first came on the screen, she was saying to another girl, Come on now, this isn't socks class. This is dance class. Get your shoes on. <laughs> okay, arpeggio. In the key of C. Here's your C. Here we go. Ready? And... Do it again right away, right away. Ready, go. That was much better for me that time. Bang on, actually. Thank God. How are you guys doing with that? Yes, Leslie. So I have the, the short finger problem, too. And when, when I'm up there, I'm, I'm okay. But when I come down, like, all my fingers are up in the air. I'm in no man's land. Oh. And I'm trying to find out where my second finger needs to go. And it's always hard. Here's what I suggest for that. Don't let your fingers come up in the air. As okay. much as you want them to, don't let them, okay? What you can do, though, is let the, the pressure completely off of your two. Try not to let it kind of move geographically on the string to follow your four, but you can relax it completely. This is what I do. So I still have it there. I've rolled forward quite a bit on it. I've relaxed it a lot so I can get my B. And now when I need to play the G, instead of kind of trying to find home base again, all I got to do is relax back. See that? So I roll forward and then relax back and put the pressure back on. See that? That's how I do it. See if it works for you there. And I'm sure lots of you other guys are having that same problem because when you reach up like that, sometimes the hand just wants to come up. But don't let it. Your fourth finger can get that note. Remember, between B and C on the piano is no black note, okay? So just like stretching your third finger to get G sharp on the D string, you do the same thing with your pinky to go from B to C, okay? So most people, I haven't met anybody yet that can't, actually can't do it, you know? <laughs> anyway, one more time with the arpeggio, I'll give you a chance to try that move. Relaxing it, reaching. And then going back to home base with the same pressure as before. Ready? Go. a good warm-up. It's gonna put a bit of rosin on my bow here. I think I'm gonna need a rehair pretty soon. It's been about a year and you know I'm in denial during this pandemic. Like what do I need a rehair for? I haven't done a gig in like a year, you know? But at the same time I am using the violin every day and it's one of those things. You still have to do it. It's like cutting your nails. When I'm on the road for instance on long tours I always get kind of mad when it's time to cut my nails because it means that I've been away from home like for longer than I want. It's kind of like that. <laughs> anyway, okay. New York Jake. Let's get her out and see if we can practice her. I'm going to get my version up here. Great job on the version there, Don. You got, you got her all good there in the end. It's really good. Thank you very much for doing that. 
I gotta go to the, all right, the Google Drive. Where is this thing? I'm just giving up on that. New York. Oh, here we go. Okay. So I'd say we'll just take her nice and slow and just go through it. And then so people can ask me questions if they're having trouble with any part of it or anything like that. But otherwise, I think we should just give her a little, an old go here. Okay, i got to cover some of you with the music, but just holler out if you're having problems. So let's see. What would be a good practicing tempo to start off with here? I'm thinking somewhere around here. That's gonna work? Nodding. That's good. Okay. Let's give it a go. One, two, three. She got kicked out, shall we? Okay, let's do it again right away. Great tune this tune is. So glad we're doing it. Okay, one more time. A one, two, three, go to.
either. You can see it's a little rough on the hand. How's everybody feeling about that tune? Great. Any problems? Anybody having any problems they need help with? I'm here to help. What I'm on the earth for. Help with fiddle tunes, especially in C. <laughs> okay, well, you know what that means. We're going to speed her up. Okay, let's see if we can do... Um, you think we can do that? We can certainly have a crack at it. Let's do it. Two times at that speed. I hope you're hearing some of the double stops that are possible in the key of C. There's some really, really nice ones for those that are inclined. This one is a nice one. That's a, that's an E on the D string and a C at the same time. So I do that all the time. It's a really nice way to do it. Another good one in the key of C is C and G. So that's D3, that's the G on the D string, and the C on the A string. Very nice together. Another good one is this one. That's another one I use a lot in the key of C. So that's D1, an E, and G3, a C. It's a third. Very, very useful in the key of C. Another one I do all the time, C natural and open E. See that? That's a great one in the key of C. Okay? So that for some people that like to throw the odd double stop in, that's going to help you. Okay? Let's do it a little faster. Whew. Okay. One, two, three. Like it was just going along just fine. Anybody having any difficulty? No, no, everybody looked very cheerful there playing the New York jig. And I was kind of looking and checking out and remembering uh, all the different Zoom shots that I used to look at every Wednesday there. 
Uh, like, for instance, uh, I can see Don's shot there. It's got all his collection of instruments. It's pretty nice there, Don. I'm going to ask you about your mandolin. What man? What kind of mandolin is that? It looks like it has an arch top or something like that. It's an A-style that I made uh, a couple of years ago. You made it? Yeah. Wow, nice one, one my, man. One of my first, actually. Have, have you made any other things? A uh, few guitars, an uh, uh, octave mandolin, um... Uh, a few other things, yes. I'm working on a fiddle right now. Are right, you it's really? Just a few setting the neck, so. Oh, that's for sure. Wow. Well, that's pretty cool. I'd love to check it out someday. And your banjo there is that a four string or a five string? Five. Five. Cool. Yeah. Very nice. And then I love Grant's shot with the gun pointing at his head. I forgot about that one there. It looked like you're getting shot in the head the whole time you're playing there, Grant. That's it's Grant Foster. It's just made out of plastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. And then there's John with the fork and knife on the wall there. When we first started doing the rehearsals, I thought that that was an unintentional close-up of his tuning pegs on his guitar. I was like, you got the weirdest looking guitar, man. <laughs> Always hungry. <laughs> okay, so we're feeling good about New York, Jake. I'd like to try it faster, but I don't want to push it there tonight. I think it's, I, if everybody's happy, let's leave it where it is, and let's go to I Lost My Love, okay? Because I think we can get that going pretty quick. So I know it's a review, so we'll start slow, and then we'll pick it up a bit. Let me just get the uh, version up on my desktop here. I Lost Me Love. Here it is. Excellent. Okay, so it's going to get a little smaller here. Very uh, unfortunate news that uh, Sandy, or uh, not Sandy, uh, um, Ashley McIsaac's dad died a couple of days ago. And uh, I had no idea he was sick or anything, uh, but uh, Ashley didn't seem too surprised about it. So that's, uh, that's, that's kind of very sad. He's a very nice man. I've met him many times. Extremely nice. Very supportive of uh, Ashley and his music over the years. Like, really big time. Very nice family altogether. Anyway. Okay, so we're going to go nice and easy here because I know it's a review. So we're going to do review speed of I Lost My Love. It's going to be like this. Oh, look at that double stop again, eh? E and C together. And it's kind of cool as it's a carryover from the from the C tune. So uh, you might want to try it. Okay, here we go. Hold on to your heads and keep your helmets on. One, two, three.
lovely. A minor. How's everybody feeling about when I lost my love? Feeling good? Any problems or difficulties of any kind that you would like to describe to me? No? Okay, good. So now, let's see about putting them together. New York jig and I lost my love. So how does the New York jig end? Let me see. Okay, let's see. So, uh... So, uh, uh, it's easy. So we're just going to use that pickup of the E. Simple as that. Okay. Well, last time we decided not to use it. Oh, we're going to have a little break? Yeah. Okay. I like it. I like it. Might, might be a good idea. <laughs> Let me see. Let me just check it out. Uh... great okay we'll do that so we're just going to take a break all right we're going to play that quarter note and then uh, come in on beat we're going to play it like it like it was a like it was a dotted quarter note and we're going to come in on the a of i lost my love okay that's what we're going to do so why don't we try them together now oh we did get this far last week we did put them together last week yeah so let's practice that then. so two times each Think we can handle that speed there for both of them? Let's give it a crack and see. A one, two, three.
those two tunes together, I just love it more and more. How's everybody feeling about the set and the transition and the seam and the everything? Good. Anybody having any difficulty or problems at all? Or just want to complain about it or anything, really? We're good. Okay, that's really, really good. Now, of course, I'd like to get it faster, but not right now. We'll leave it for now. And let, why don't we take a look at uh, Learning Jerry's Beaver Hat. Wicked old tune. Everybody plays it. And so should we. <laughs> I think I sent a version. So let me see here. That one gets in my head big time. It's an earworm of a tune. Okay, so I see I have a session.org version of it here, so I must have sent that to you guys. Let me just check it out quick before we start in on it and make sure it's kosher. just the ending I couldn't find the ending that I liked <laughs> but this one is very very common so there's nothing wrong with getting it that's for sure I just wish I could find the one with a nice ending that I I'll, I'll show you what it is just in case anybody's interested but and the the ending this is one of those two for tunes so the ending is the same for the a part the b part almost <laughs> So for the first ending, I usually you usually go. Uh, let me see how. Well, I guess I do a roll. So it's not far off of what's there. I do a roll there, and in the second ending, I gotta just do it. Yeah, that's right. It's kind of D E D D is kind of what I'm used to, but I have heard it with the E-F-E-D a lot. So we'll go ahead and we'll get it the way it's written, okay? Uh, but let me just break it down for you. It's a great tune, very, very popular. And the way it show opens up is this big D major arpeggio. See that? And then it even goes to the F, you know, but uh, we play a little E before it. See that? So. And it's a really nice slide there. It's a great opportunity to slide. I actually don't even play the E. I just play a very flat F that I bring in. See that? With a little speed of my bow and a little finger pressure. And it's really cool. See that? So you can experiment with that. The E is fine. The E will work just fine right alongside of it, but you can experiment with that idea. It's a nice, it's very Irish. <laughs> that big semitone slide. And you see how I'm speeding up my bow there. It's really nice. It makes the note come to life like an old fella at the pub who hasn't said anything in a half hour. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere it just says, whoop! See that? So that's what we're doing there. So we got the big D major arpeggio. And then we arpeggiate that back down, kind of, okay? So let's try that opening phrase, the first two bars, nice and slow. We'll do the pickup that's there as well. Ready, and... Okay, let's do that again, because we've got to do it four times the whole tune. Do it again. Ready, two, three, go, two. One more time to be sure. Ready, two, three, go, two. Okay, we 
we get in that bit, hopefully. The way that it carries on. It's kind of a back and forth there. You see that? We got A to the F. And then arpeggiate. And then we got this I, I do a roll. And then a scale down. Or you could just do what's written there, D, E, D. But most people do a roll. And pick it up on the G. So let's do that. Second two bars of the first line. A, F, A. A ready, two, three. Let's do it again. Ready to go. One more time with that. Ready to go. And okay, so that's kind of first phrase, second phrase. And this tune is a first phrase, second phrase, first phrase again tune. So that's pretty handy. Now all we have to get is the ending. So first of all, let's see how far we can get. Okay, let's start up at the top and see if we can get all the way through to the ending. A one, two, three, go, two. <laughs> Like it went pretty well. Now the ending is the same, it's no problem at all. It's an A F A again, same as before. Okay, just like in the second phrase, except this time we're gonna roll or play what's there, F E F, and then a great big long D. So that ending phrase sounds like this. Or, for those that are not rolly abled, okay, and the nice thing is, guys, is that if you're doing the straight up melody and you can't do the roll, and you're playing F E, sorry, E F E, and somebody's playing a nice F roll along with you, it's going to be just lovely, okay, really, really nice. So don't shy away from playing this plain old melody. We need some people still doing it to fill it out like that and make it sound really full and nice, okay? So nothing wrong with playing the straight up melody at all, but if you feel like rolling, that's how we roll. Let's do the ending a couple of more times. Are ready to go. from one end of the A part to the other, shall we? Just gonna have a little drink of water. Okay. Here we go. One, two, three, one, two.
check in. How are we doing? Has everybody got that A part? Any problems before we take the grinder to it? No? Okay, let's grind away till there's nothing left for I don't think I really need the music. I'm just so worried about improvising. Okay. A one, two, three, go to. to a rye it's great and how are the guitar players feeling about this tune so far no problems excellent i don't see doreen where's doreen tonight she her here. shoulder's bothering her she emailed me to make sure you were recording <laughs> she, she did yeah she's good she'll work on it tomorrow sure okay. A big thank you to Don for putting the chords here. They were, they're working beautifully, Don. So. Yes, thank you very much, Don. It's excellent, really. Okay, great. Now let's go on. Let's get this B part, shall we? It's really, it's not hard, but it's hard. <laughs> and then we got this. Okay, so this is one of those ones very repetitive, eh? You can see the first phrase there, second phrase starts off exactly the same, takes a turn halfway through. Third phrase is the same as the first, exactly the same, and then we got this ending, okay? So and they're all arpeggiated, each of these phrases. So we got the D arpeggio. Then we got the G arpeggio. Back to D, and then we got this again. And it changes okay so let's see if we can make our way through the first couple of bars of these arpeggiated things okay a one two three go to arpeggiate again C to E. Okay, how did that go? That looked like it went pretty well. It's not really hard. Let's do it again. A one, two, three, go, two. Arpeggiate. 
roll D. Okay, let's try doing that ending. So that's B, D, B, A, F, D. Roll on the E and a great big D to finish. So let's do that again. Just the last two bars. A one, two, go. Roll. Let's do it again. Ready, two, go. problems with that ending no that's great okay well let's put our hats on and get right from one side of the a of the B part to the other a few times and this this is one of those things where I got the lazy bow end up playing a double stop at the end of that pretty well every time just to let you know okay here we go one, two, three, go to. any bits or pieces that are giving them a problem please don't hesitate to ask I can definitely help okay and we're gonna try the whole thing now and take a little yeah. breather yes sorry I'm just wondering on the, the very last bar of the last line mm -hmm. are you ending on an up bow yep I think I would be okay, I can't figure out how you do the roll and still end up on an up bow could, could you do it in slow motion absolutely not Maybe just the, the entire last bar? Yeah, sure. I'm going to play the last two bars. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay, I think, I th okay, I think so. I think I'm adding an extra couple notes in there. Oh, really? Yeah. So if you're doing the roll, if this Ooh. is very common when you do a roll and then it's just an open string, Make sure you don't play an extra E at the end of the roll, like this. See that? Oh, that is it's, exactly what I'm doing. Okay, yeah. very common. When you go from a roll to the open string, for some reason the hand doesn't like it, doesn't believe it, and it tries to put in an extra note for some reason. So <laughs> it's actually quite simple. 
That's it. Okay? Good okay, point. That's exactly what I was doing. Thank you. Good point. I'm glad you brought it up because I'm sure you're not alone. Anybody so, else? Let's do another question, though, Dan, because you ended on an up bow, which is where I ended, and I thought, okay, I must be wrong because I should be down bow, so I was going to try and sneak a slur in there somewhere. But if we end on up bow and then we repeat, what do we do with that pickup? We, we play... You, you slur it into the up bow. And okay. this is a very common thing with jigs. Uh, and we would do it also in the first part. Do you see where there's a quarter note followed by an eighth note? Yes. And it's in the latter half of the measure. So you just slur that all up. That's right. And so you would do that in the first part, the first bar you do it. And, and in the first bar of the second line, you got to do it again. Okay. Okay. And then the other thing is, you're right though, it gets a bit confusing because when it, when you join up the last bar of the A part and repeat and again, you end up getting that figure again. See what I mean? Yeah. 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 It's very common. It happens all the time in jigs, so watch out for it. If you see the quarter note at the end of a jig or at the end of a part, you know you're going to have to do that move. Because sometimes I'll do a slur up somewhere higher into the tune so I don't get there. Now I'll tell you what there, Leslie, that's no that that's a good strategy. Like it it works, but it's more work because you gotta remember yeah. your little move that you made up first time in mm -hmm. history, you know? Yep. And then you gotta make sure you do it every time. Whereas this figure that I'm talking about, you run into it so much it's just yeah, if you know it's a little bit easier to it the is, hand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very good points guys. It's great. Because you're not alone, that's for sure. Okay, now shall we try the whole thing a little tiny bit faster? And then we'll see about joining it up with the uh, with the other two jigs. So just a little bit faster. Oh, and then we'll take a breather. So let's try it, say, about here. Okay? It's going to be great. Okay, one, two, three,
pretty confident. Everybody ended right at the same time. Gotta love that. One of those Zoom moments. Okay, anybody having any problems or too fast or anything like that? No? That's great. Okay, we'll join it up with the other two tunes. Just gonna drink some water here. I was texting my buddy Brian today because I heard a hilarious story on the news about how you guys might have heard it too, but so last month some guy walked into Cosmo Music up in Richmond Hill and he went over to a vintage uh, custom Les Paul, which is a big guitar, and he strummed it a little tiny bit and then he stuffed it into his pants and left the store with it in his big baggy sweatpants. Like, I couldn't believe what I was hearing, you know? And, and anyway, apparently there's footage of it. And so I texted Brian right away because he's got a Les Paul. Uh, it's a 57, right? He bought it a few years ago. And that's why we made actually our second record was because Brian got a new guitar. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I, I texted him and I said, listen, man, you didn't get that Les Paul by stuffing it down your pants and walking out of the store, did you? And then, so then I, I, I went to look on Google to send him a clip of the footage of the guy doing it. And I sent him the first thing that came up. And then when I looked at it, it looked a little strange. And I looked closer and it wasn't the right one. Apparently, this has happened before, like many times. And the clip that I sent him was actually from New York. But so there you go. That's, he stuffed the guitar in his pants. Now, of course, I'm wondering to myself, could you do it with a fiddle? Like... You'd have to be careful, of course, with a fiddle. It's a little bit more uh, fragile than a guitar. But I bet you you could, you know, get it down there. <laughs> Except that they put you in that little room. That's probably why they put you upstairs in the room. Yeah, so you can't leave with the fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God, I laughed so hard at after that. COVID, after COVID, I don't have much room in my sweatpants. <laughs> Never get a fiddle in there. Never. A million years. No. I won't even get a bow in there. I, I guess what they'll have to do is anybody who wants to try an instrument has to take a bath ball. <laughs> That's it. Take the pants right off. You can't take a risk. Just take them right off. <laughs> you know, that was something when I played the 300-year-old Guaneri with Frankie Gavin, before he even touched it, he took all of his rings off, which he had like four of them, uh, and his belt he took off as well because he was scared to death of scratching the the old Guaneri with his belt because like, you know, it happens very easy, eh? Uh, so he did that right away and I always remembered that. It was a very uh, a nice sign of respect before he touched the old girl. Anyway, okay, shall we put together the tunes? Oh, let's see how this goes together though. So I, I lost my love. Let me just get that back up here. I don't have to do that. I can just do it this way. Open recent. Okay, so we got... Uh, I think we should use a pickup note. Okay? For, for this particular transition. I, I Because I think that the little pause... If we ended up doing the little pause again, it gets a little bit much. You know? So we'll use a pickup note... And uh, but I think uh, yeah, well, we'll use the one that's there, just the plain D that's there. We'll use okay. So that's gonna be uh, that's how that's gonna go. I'll do it for you one more time. your bow to and give your bow a chance to turn around okay so now I'm gonna get that up on my screen again and we're gonna try playing before we even do it we're gonna try playing the last couple of bars of I lost my love and try to go into Jerry's beaver okay I'm just gonna get this over here so I don't improvise okay so we're gonna play uh, we might as well play this. That's what we're going to play. So that's basically the last four bars of I Lost My Love. 
Let's give it a go nice and easy. Uh, ready, two, three. Same transition. Ready, go. Okay, everybody feeling good? It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Just got to have a plan, all right? So now, let's give it a go. Let's see. We'll play each tune two times. And let's see if we can play this whole damn set. So, New York Jig, followed by I Lost My Love, followed by Jerry's Beaver Hat. Two times each. All right. One, two, three. Sorry, sorry, had another tune in my mind altogether. Ready, two, three. Oh man, I am good. The two tunes are actually quite close. So let me open up the other one too. Okay, there we go. I won't lead you straight now. One, two,
how's everybody feeling about it? Great. Okay. So we'll continue working on it. Is there any weird things or problems or things that are happening that you don't like or things that you want to happen that aren't happening? No? That's great. So we'll keep working on it. We'll just keep working away on that set and I'll come up with another set there in the next little while. Look at everybody doing the fiddler stretches. That's great. It's excellent. I have to do my yoga after the rehearsal tonight. We let me and the wife left it late, but it's only 22 minutes there tonight, so it shouldn't be too bad. And I looked at the beginning of the video, and she's starting off right on her back. Always a good sign. Always a good sign it's not going to be too hard when she starts off on her back. You know what I mean? So I'm hoping it's not going to be too hard. Okay, great. So now let's move on and let's practice the, uh, what do you call it, the Broken Pledge set, okay? I don't, think, I don't think we'll have time to look at the Mason's Apron tonight, and I want to have a good look at it, so we'll do it next time. And in the meantime, you guys will have those videos that I posted on YouTube, and you have the music, and if anybody didn't get the music, just uh, let me know and I'll forward it. <clears throat> and we'll have a good long look at it next time. But for now, let's, yes, Elaine. I didn't get the music down. You didn't? So, okay. Whatever. I will do it right now. Oh, Susan Blaze, uh, Susan Mc, or Deborah McPhee had a string problem. That's why she left. Oh, no. I hate that. Hit my chair. Knocked out the peg for the D string. Oh, oh, oh God. Oh, I hate when people have fiddle problems and I can't help. Okay, here it is. Main. Okay, I just forwarded it to you there, uh, Elaine. Anybody else that needs it that doesn't doesn't have it? Liz, okay. Liz too. Yeah. No problem. And Elizabeth. Two, okay, Elizabeth, yes. Thank you. Hey, Dan. Yeah. On me. On the six-page uh, music score that you sent us, where does the um, first uh, variation end? On the on the sixth page, the very last no, page. On, 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 on which does it end on the first page? I assume the, the, the basic melody. Oh, the basic melody. Very good question. So the very the basic melody ends on. Uh, let me see. It ends on, at the, the end of the first line of the second page. If you look really close there, you can see there's a double bar line yeah. at the yeah. end of that line. That's the, that's the end of the bare bones melody of the Mason's apron that he plays. Okay. And then there's, a, then there's crazy stuff that he reprises the B part, but different. See that? And then we do it again, a little bit different again, and then we go up high after that. But the basic melody is going to end at the end of the first line of page two. Thank you. Good Thank question. You. Good question there, Earl. All right. Okay, that'll be fun. But for now, broken pledge. Nice dog, Nancy. It's all wrapped up in a blanket. God. I always wonder, the dogs in my neighborhood all seem to have, like, fully outfitted with clothes. And I keep wondering, like, aren't they already warm? Like, I always thought that... My, there are dogs that we had living in the country when I was growing up. Spooky, for instance, which was the last dog that I had before I left the house. He was an amazing dog. We could leave him for, like, three, four days. He'd just kind of do his own thing. He was an amazing dog. He didn't need no sweater, that's for sure. Or the boots or anything like that. But, uh... City I have to is put different. my dogs in clothes because she's a girl and I can't always remember it's a she or he. <laughs> because they used to have male dogs all the time. So. <laughs> and, 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 her, and her name is Charlie, so I guess got, oh, he, he, he. <laughs> well, that's so a good way to do it. Her, so I remember it's a her. <laughs> when, I kid, when I was a kid, all the dogs lived outside in dog houses all winter long. 
Well, yeah, that's, uh, you know, my, well, our dog Spooky came in, for sure. It's my dad loved dogs. We had 14 dogs on this property over the years. We had 14 dogs there, you know, usually three or so at a time. Uh, but Spooky, we got there uh, uh, after after our dog Tigger died, so it would have been 1992, I think it was. And uh, he was an amazing dog. Like, he was so well-mannered. And so we had just moved into our new house, which was really big. It had a hardwood floor, and it was, my mom thought it was the fanciest thing ever. So Spooky was not allowed to come into the main part of the house with the hardwood floor. He had to stay in the back porch. And he heated that like you wouldn't believe. You could hang, you could dangle a stake in front of him and he would not put one foot on that hardwood floor. And I remember one morning, my niece Alex was about three and a half at the time and she was staying with us. And I came down the hallway and there was a, mo a commotion and I saw that Alex had Spooky by the tail like this, all of her little weight on his tail, saying, come on, Spooky, come and watch Barney with me. He wouldn't do it. No way. He just was like this. No. Anyway, I love that dog. Poor old Spooky. An unfortunate name. My friend Eddie Cromwell, a black guy from Preston, Nova Scotia, came and stayed with me, and I, and I uh, introduced him to the dog, and I said his name was Spook, and he was like, are you serious? Because he was a, an entirely black dog. And Eddie was like, are you serious, man? Like, what do you say? And I was like, we got him at Halloween. Really? <laughs> okay. May I, to, may I have the pledge as well? What's that? May I have the pledge as well? The broken pledge? Sure. I'm just trying to find it here. This is, this is the, this is not the right book of broken pledge. Hi, Jerome. Just, sure. But don't come into the shop because you're. You're not decent. Okay, let me see. Where is this broken Dan, pledge? Dan, what are the tunes in this set? Okay, the tunes are The Broken Pledge, Feral O'Gara, and Toss the Feathers. Okay, okay. I got this. Okay. okay, thanks. And I'm just going to forward this. So who needed it again? Who needed the Broken Pledge? Carl. So, sorry? Carl. Carl. Good man, Carl. You still in Pennsylvania, Carl? Okay. Good man. I miss the states. Okay, everybody got it now? So first of all, so let's, uh, should we play the whole set? What, do you, what are the chances we can just play the whole set? Oh, awesome mask Jerome. Very, very nice. I'd show these guys, but he's not decent. He's just about to go to bed. Uh, anyway, so let's do it. Broken pledge. We're going to try the whole set. Oh, okay. I'll show it to them like this. It's upside down now. Oh, so, whoops. <laughs> Pretty cool, eh? They're all giving you thumbs there, buddy. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. so Dan Mine says three times through across the feather. Are we doing that? Or? Yeah, we do. we'll do that for sure. For sure. Oh, and Marie put the Google Drive on there. Smart one there, Anne Marie. Very good. Okay, so let's give it a try. Let's not go fast. This is just a review. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go slow because it's hard and we never really got it up to a level where everybody totally felt comfortable I remember before and since we didn't ha get to do our concert let's take the opportunity now to get comfortable with these tunes okay so we'll play them nice and easy like this fast Three, 
been a while for that one, and I can see some people kind of like trying to get it back, <laughs> which it might take it might take a few goes to you know get it back under the fingers for sure. So why, how about we do this? I'm gonna leave that with you guys for this week. Next week, that's what we'll warm up with. Okay, we'll warm up with the broken pledge. So have a look at it and refamiliarize yourself with the tune or with the whole set there this week and next week we'll warm up with that one broken pledge the c major scale will help us uh in any case because the first tune is in d minor which is you know got a lot in common with uh c major okay and then next week so let, so here's our plan for next week we'll have a review week we're going to review the broken pledge we're going to review this set that we just learned. We're going to kind of work it up in tempo a little bit. We'll take the grinder to the whole set a little bit there. We'll see if we can work it up in tempo. Uh, and then we'll review. What else should we, we uh, review? Oh, I was going to say the hut on Staffen Island. I was doing it with my, uh, with my Wednesday morning group. Uh, and it's such a great tune. I had forgotten about it. So, And we're doing that with... Uh, the Ace and Deuce or something like that, or the Job of the Journey work. Is it, which which one are we doing with that? Anybody tell me? The Blackbird. Blackbird. That's right. Okay. So take a look at those two as well. Work those up a little bit as well. And then the new thing that we'll do next week is trying to learn the Mason's Apron. That's that's going to be our uh, our new tune that we're going to learn. Does anybody already play the Mason's Apron? Yeah? One person? That's it? No, the role player fiddlers play it, but it's a much simplified version. Right. There's a whole bunch of us play it. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, that's great. And so this is going to be kind of an expansion of that version, yeah. you know? Because yeah. yeah. I know I know the simpler version, and, and it's uh, it's got all, as Jerry Holland used to say, it, all, it has all the same notes as well. <laughs> So that'd be really good. So we'll learn it, we'll get it good, and that'll be the start on that, okay? So that's what we'll do next week. It'll be a review, except for the Mason's Apron. Very good work this week, guys. I worked you real hard, and I did record it, so it'll be up there for posterity, okay? Have a great week. We'll see you next week on Wednesday. Thanks, 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 Thanks,